Over the weekend, I had the honor of joining the Association of Law Students in the Philippines and their 31st National Convention. I was invited to be one of the panelists for the discussion on blending technology and the learning and practice of the law. The guest of honor for the event was Associate Justice Mario Victor F. Leonen. He shared some of the updates and the proposed bar reforms for the 2020 and 2021 bar exams. Just as he has mentioned in his speech, the best and primary resource for information about the bar would be the official bar bulletins. The situation is still very fluid and the Supreme Court is still in the process of finalizing the modality of the next bar exam. For what it's worth, what I'm going to share with you are some of the notes I've taken during his speech, how the bar reforms will impact law students, and where do we go from here moving forward. All of this and more coming right up! Hi, my name is Lex and welcome to Lex in Motion. In this channel, I'll be helping you build your competence, confidence, and capability in law school. Start today by hitting the subscribe button below. New episodes are posted every Friday. Justice Lunen began his speech with an outline of the proposed bar reforms for the 2020-2021 bar exam. He lamented the sorry state of the bar exams in the Philippines, particularly of the inequities and unfair advantages of those who come from Luzon versus those who have to travel from Visayas and Mindanao. Totoo naman kapatid na ang ating mga barista na nanggagaling sa South ay kailangang lumawas ng dalawang beses. Una, para makapag-process ng application at makakuha ng bar permit at pangalawa, para sa mismong bar review. Naroon na rin na ang mga barista sa Maynila at malalapit na probinsya ay napapaligiran ng kanilang mga jowa, kaibigan, kaklase, mga bar buddies at kanilang pamilya sa bawat linggo ng bar exam. Samantalang ang mga manggagaling sa Visayas at Mindanao ay swerte na kung may kasama. Madalas daw ay sumasakay lang sila ng jeep mag-isa. Ayon kay Justice Yunen, ang barista mula sa South ay nangangailangan ng at least 100,000 pesos para makapag exam. Kasama na dyan ang mga gagastusin sa pamasahe, board and lodging at iba pang gastusin para lang makapag-bar. Realistically kapatid, kahit na ikaw ay nasa Maynila na, aabot pa rin ng 45,000 hanggang 80,000 pesos ang iyong magagastos sa bar. Hindi pa kasali dyan ang hotel transportation at ang budget mo para sa barista cravings. Justice Lunen calls this the geographic and economic inequity of the bar exam. He also adds one more and that's poor handwriting. To a certain extent, the bar exam is a pageant of penmanship where those with legible handwriting are given more time and attention by examiners. Para sa kanya daw na pangit ang sulat, inequity rin ang handwriting sa bar exam. If there's one good thing that came about during this pandemic, it's that Justice Lunen has had the unique opportunity to be the longest serving bar chairperson ever. Totoo yan kapatid dahil ang turnover ay usually December na. There isn't really enough time to make any meaningful changes to the way we conduct the bar exam. With that being said, here are some of the reforms he wants to introduce to the 2020-2021 bar exam. First, the bar exam should be a qualifying exam. It is not a test of brilliance. Dito kapatid ay agree ako, the bar exam is essentially a licensure exam. It is the test that determines whether or not a person is fit to be a lawyer for someone else. Dahil sa nasa ng mga law school na magkaroon ng mga top notcher o mamaintain ng kanilang matataas na passing rate, nagiging pahirapan ang bawat subject. May mga professors na kung makapagbigay ng exam sa first year, first semester, ay mahirap pa sa bar exam. Maraming professors ang nambabagsak, hindi dahil mathematically bagsak ang estudyante, kundi dahil sa kanilang pananaw ay kawawa lang ang bata kung ipapasa at saka lang babagsak sa bar exam. They would like to think of it as an act of kindness, but let's call it for what it is. It is an arbitrary system designed to preserve bar passing rates. Sa parehong paraan, maraming law school din ang pahirapan ng pag-usad mula first year to second year dahil sa QPI o Quality Point Index. Heto kapatid ay ang minimum maintaining average na dapat makamit ng bawat estudyante para makamove up ng year level. Kung hindi ka umabot dito, goodbye and thank you na lang sa matrikulang ibinayad mo. 
the QPI exists under whatever label it is called because law schools have to preserve their passing rates. Now that the bar exam is moving away from a test of pride and brilliance, then we should also find ways to humanize the learning of the law. We should begin treating it as a qualifying exam and as a licensure exam. And that law schools should find ways to prepare students not for the bar, but for practice. Real talk lang kapatid, maraming gumagraduate sa law school na aral na aral para sa bar exam. Ready na sumabak sa anim na buwan ng review, pero walang alam sa practice. Natatapos tayo na ready sumagot sa MAC bars, pero walang negotiating skills, walang matinong pleading writing skills, at hindi makaharap ng maayos sa mga magiging kliyente. Wala tayong lakas ng loob na bumili ng aircon, printer at computer at magtayo ng solo practice right after passing the bar. Madalas kailangan pa natin ng dalawa hanggang limang taon ng experience kung saan tayo ay aalipinin sa law offices bago natin masabing ready na tayong mag solo practice. Something clearly has to be done to address this. Second, success in the bar exams will be measured differently. Justice Lyonen adds that there won't be a top 10 but the highest distinctions o mga makakakuha ng highly proficient ay pararangalan lahat, hindi lang ang top 10. Law schools will also be ranked according to performance but further classified as among those with less than 50 bar applicants, 50 to 100 applicants and those with 100 applicants or more. I think this is a step in the right direction kapatid. I fully agree that with this system, mawawala na ang imbalance sa preparation ng mga barista. If I'm honest, kapatid, there are law schools who prepare individuals whom they feel would be the next bar top notchers on our students who have a chance to place in the bar exams. If we take away the numerical grading system and replace it with qualitative grades gaya ng highly proficient, average, or below average at poor, then we are opening the doors of possibility for every barista, no matter their past performances in law school. Justice Lunen has called out the practice of giving out expensive gifts to those who place in the bar exam. Although it's always nice to fantasize about driving home a new car, this practice also breeds inequity in the preparation for the bar. Law schools should not focus on their honor students but on all of their students. Everyone has the potential to be part of the highly proficient class. The focus now should be on preparing everyone, inclusivity versus exclusivity. Third, Justice Lyonen has proposed changes on the kind of questions that should be asked in the bar exam. He mentioned that issue spotting is still the primary skill that sought to be measured by the bar. He has also made it clear that the problems are the fact patterns and the questions are the specific queries posed by the bar examiner to which the examinee must now respond. He also pointed out that the focus should still be on the codal provisions plus the interpretation of the Supreme Court. Nilinaw niya ang barista ay dapat nakafocus sa canons ng jurisprudence. Pero teka, ano ba muna yung canon na yan? Sa bawat kasong dinidesisyon na ng Supreme Court, meron tayong ratio decidendi or the reason of the decision. Kalakip nito ang dahilan kung bakit ganito ang naging desisyon ng Supreme Court. Ang bawat ratio decidendi ay maaaring maulit, mapalitan, madagdagan o baguhin ng Supreme Court. Kung hindi ito binabago pero ito ay inuulit na, sila ay nagiging mga doctrine. Doctrines are the repeated rulings of the Supreme Court. If a doctrine is repeated and consistently upheld by the court across the different compositions or generations of justices in the Supreme Court, then they become canons of jurisprudence. Naging mga halimbawa niya sa canons of jurisprudence ay ang meeting of the minds pagdating sa obligations and contracts, ang control test sa labor relations at ang separation of powers sa political law. These are very basic concepts kapatid na tipong hindi ka papasa sa isang subject nang hindi mo na mamaster ang mga ito. I fully agree with the direction that Justice Lyonen is taking. Kadalasan kasi sa ating mga klase ay ang mga dinidiscuss ay mga canon naman o mga ruling na hindi pa pinapalitan o binabago ng Supreme 
Court. Nakakainis lang din minsan na matatanong tayo sa mga kasong ang professor lang natin ang may alam. Tipong exception to the exception of the exception of the requisite. If we stick to the basics kapatid, then I don't think we will ever go wrong. If we stick to that which is settled, then we are opening ourselves to more time and attention to the codal provisions. To what the law is and what the law should be. Justice Lunen also addressed the myth that dissenting opinions should be studied particularly well. A dissenting opinion is the divergence or separation from the main opinion by one justice. May urban legend kasi dito kapatid na ang mga dissenting opinions ng bar chairperson ay mga favorite daw na itanong. Justice Lunen busted this myth by stating that the focus ought to be on the canons of jurisprudence. The bar chair should not use the bar exam as a platform to advocate for his or her opinions. Fourth, the bar exam according to Justice Lunen in all likelihood will be a digital exam. During his talk, he made the distinction between an online exam and a digital but manually proctored exam. An online exam is an exam given and administered over the internet. Location in an online exam is not important. In a digital exam, the answers are made digitally. That is through a computer as opposed to analog or paper and pen exam. In all likelihood, the next bar exam will be a digital exam to be administered in regional and local testing centers to be accredited over the next year. There will be pilot tests that will be conducted next year with the assistance of the Philippine Association of Law Schools and the ALSP. The exam would require each barista to come in with their own devices. Justice Lunen adds that this is to address the inequity of handwriting within the bar exam. We spend years practicing our handwriting, he says, but in practice, our pleadings have to be typed up and printed. Second, a laptop or a desktop is essentially the tool we will all need when it comes to practice. Hindi naman din sulat kamay ang ating mga pleadings at ang isang laptop ay investment na rin maituturing. Sa mga darating na panahon na ikaw, kapatid, ay magiging abogado. The Supreme Court is now in the process of testing the software to be used for the bar exam. It has the space for the barista to make notes, write outlines, insert attachment if that is at all required, and a calculator. The most important feature for me, kapatid, is the ability to save a local copy in the event that your device crashes, freezes, or hangs. In case of a restart, you do not lose your informations or your answers. You start where you have left off. Once the Supreme Court reveals the software, all bar candidates will be required to have it and might be required to take Mac bars using the software. If this works, kapatid, if this is good enough for the Supreme Court, then law schools should adopt this software for all law students. I support the idea of transitioning from paper and pen to digital exams. Imagine the risk of transmission, kapatid, of having 10,000 students write on notebooks for each of the bar subjects. Baka may mangulangot pa dyan at makahawa pa ng examiner. Finally, there is the issue of security. Justice Lunen addressed the integrity of the bar exam through the physical proctors located in each of the accredited testing centers. There will be cameras that will stream the exam room to a centralized command center located wherever the bar chair is. Baristas will only be allowed to bring one device, the device in which they intend to take the bar exam. Smart watches, smart necklaces, or smart earrings now, if any, will not be allowed in the exam room. Kasama na rin sa security syempre ang mismong bar examinee. All of us starting from our first day in the first year in law school ought to live with some personal honor code. The same will hold true even after you, kapatid, will become a lawyer. Anyone caught cheating in the exam will automatically fail the bar exam and will be disqualified from partaking in future exams. Justice Lunen has also made it abundantly clear that he will press criminal charges against anyone caught cheating. Kung naroon ka lang, kapatid, at makikita mo ang gigil sa kanyang mukha, ay matatakot ka ring mandaya. Imagine yung pinagpaguran mo ng lima o anim na taon ay maglalaho lang na parang bula at hindi mo na itong mapapakinabangan kung ikaw ay makukulong lang. For what it's worth, there are so many questions surrounding the next bar exam. Gaano kaya kabilis ang checking kung digital na ito at merong mga experts in all parts of the country that will be helping with the checking. 
Paano ang logistical requirements ng testing centers? Parang ang hirap namang mag-type kung normal armchairs ang gagamitin. Paano kaya ang noise na dala ng mga mechanical keyboards? Paano ang power requirements ng halimbawa ay 40 plus examinees kada exam room na may kanya-kanyang charger na tag 65 watts? Paano kung may mag-positive sa loob ng isang testing center? Hinto na ba ang bar exam? Paano ang issue ng leakage kung sakaling maraming kamay ang dadaan ng mga questionnaire. I think all of these questions kapatid Ken and will be answered in the weeks and months ahead. A localized problem Justice Lunen says will require a localized solution. Ang power outage sa isang testing center sa Isabela should not cause the entire country to suspend the bar exam. A transmission in one province can cause one testing center to close but not all the others. Again, I must hasten to add, kapatid, that we should only rely on official bar bulletins. The situation is still very fluid and nothing is set on stone. For the baristas, aral lang, basa lang. For the rest of us, thank you so much for watching. Like and share this video for Good Law School Karma and I will see you next Friday.